Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I am Justin, a.k.a. Tags. Tyler, record of days. I have been craving a good guitar <laughs> solo, and I haven't like seen anything like Rambo with their sweet ballads for the credits at the end. I haven't seen anything like that in forever. So, You know, it's funny you bring up credits. I was watching Alice in Wonderland with my girls, and we started the movie, and my daughter, who's six, she's like, uh, is this the end? And I'm like, no, this is how movies <laughs> yeah. used to start. <laughs> That's right. The old ones. My kids are kind of like that with Jungle Book and Robin yeah, Hood yeah. and stuff. So, that yeah, it's fun. kind of funny. Yeah. Episode 92, Forever Exiled. It is. This is, Justin, the Reggie White episode. I'm, I'm 92 episodes behind representing some of my favorite athletes. By the best part is in eight episode. episodes, it stops. <laughs> I know, I can't. Who, who goes into triple digits? You're but I missed done. 90, and I loved Julius Peppers. Loved Julius Peppers, so I, I missed episode 90. Sergei Fedorov was last week, right? But we didn't. We were so excited to have BK on, I just got kerfuffled, and I didn't even think about sports. So True. Sergei Fedorov last week. This week, Reggie White. Oh, goodness. Awesome. Oh, good. <laughs> Come on. Best ever. Best ever. Really, really good guy really good guy like personally or oh yeah oh yeah mm. like like the the man of the year award reggie white that's that's that guy a uh, big shout out to our patrons thank you guys for supporting the podcast your faces are awesome if you're curious what our patreon is you can find information down below or on our website gets you access to our after dark podcast which is the podcast after the podcast like i said it amazon coming right to my door right now uh, anyway <laughs> thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast you guys are awesome We'll, we'll be week? right back. Oh, yeah. are we, are we not? How was your week? Go- Muting myself. Please tell me about your week. You're going to go to the door while I tell you about my week, I right? I may, but we'll okay, pretend well, I heard I'll the just, whole thing. I'll just thing. wait. No, I'll just wait. Uh, they did not ring it. the... Oh, he's debating. Oh, he's taking a picture. They take a picture now when they drop off a package. Uh, yeah, to show. yeah, okay. Anyway, he's walking away. We're clear. I, I have my video camera up to make sure that they don't ring the doorbell in the middle of a recording. I can this wait. This is why you don't record in the middle of the day. Hey. That's right. That's what we're trying to record for the second time during the day, and it's way more work than it's worth. Are you not going to get it? Nope. I'll go grab it later. How was your week? I had a good week, man. I had a good week. Um, oh, that's that's POE week. Hold the phone. Here it is. It's at the top. Oh man. So okay, you remember remember Dumb and Dumber uh, when they're after they have like they've discovered that their suitcase has tons of cash in it, and uh, so they're starting to spend it, and they're going through the IOUs and stuff, right? And so they're in their hospital and they're watching a TV show and they're bawling their eyes out and they're using money to blow their nose and wipe away their tears. But then you end up discovering that it's just like a long distance phone call commercial and it's just a couple that misses each other, but they're crying anyway because it's such a sad commercial. Well, I watched, have you ever seen the movie, The Art of Racing in the Rain? No. Very good movie. Very good movie. Is it Disney? was on... I actually think it was on Disney Plus. Yeah, it came from the Stars package. Um, I love the book. I mean, it's Formula One fandom and dog. It's written from the perspective of the dog about this guy's life, but he's huge into Formula it's One. It's Formula One. What? It it's is. Formula it's Formula One so, and oh, a dog. Yeah, yeah it's, so sense. it's written from okay. the dog's perspective, but <laughs> it's about the guy who's trying to get into Formula. Anyway, it's a very, very good okay. story. Uh huh. Um, well, I was sobbing like a sad sack. <laughs> you know, of I was gonna like, joke oh. when you said Disney Plus that I was like, "Well, you obviously cried." <laughs> I did, I did. It's, but I mean, I cried when I read the book, and I cried when I watched the movie, and I was exact. I was just like, it wasn't even stopping. It was just like, I could. I was exactly. I reminded myself of Lloyd Christmas, it watching a long distance phone call commercial. That's awesome. But I also finished Loki this week. It's been coming oh, cool. out weekly, episodically for six weeks, and season one just finished. And to put that season together, like I kind of liked WandaVision. Sure, it's cool. It's a prequel story. Great, whatever. I liked Falcon and Winter Soldier. Great prequel story for about three major characters, four or five major characters. Great. Okay, fantastic. Set in the groundwork. What Loki? freaking mind blowing and if i was to just put all six episodes as one movie it's my favorite marvel movie that they've ever made i've heard good things about it it is really really good we're actually talking about starting we've watched up to infinity war like there's two i think there's two that are sort of based on that part we've watched up to that and so we were talking now about trying to watch everything else in order because everything there's so many there's like all these movies now and then there's combination of TV shows. So I'm going to use the Google and find the order. And Christine and I were talking about working our way through them in order. 
Oh, nice. Well, like starting from the beginning? No, just from where oh, we've okay. seen two. But there's so many out now. I don't even know which one to watch in what order. Uh, you, right now, it's actually really easy. Start yeah. with Infinity War, right? right. Like rewatch it, then do okay. Endgame, right? Because that's the same okay, movie. That's basically, the second split one, right? Okay. And then it's the it's then it's the three TV shows. There's been nothing since Endgame besides the TV show. So it's WandaVision, Isn't there a Hulk, new and, and movie Loki. Out? Black Widow? Yeah, but watch Black Widow after you've seen Loki. Oh, okay. And then after that, it'll be another Disney. Oh no, then it'll be the Legends of Shang Chi and the Ten Rings. The Ten Rings were the group that uh, captured Iron Man in the first movie when he was in the cave when he first started the whole thing. Spoiler? No, it's not. Just kidding. Fans have been desperate. Watch the Marvel one shots, man. Oh my goodness! See if you can find Marvel one shots. Did you ever watch the TV show called Agents of Shield? No, I didn't. My father. Yeah, so Christina did. did, and she was like, "Oh, but we need to watch." So I'm like, "No, mm -mm. you watched that for a long time. I'm not watching all those." It's actually officially been excluded from the MCU canon. All the Netflix shows and Agents of Shield have been excluded. They're not a part of it officially, even though Agent Coulson's in it. Huh. But anyway, cool. yeah, it was a good week. How was your week? Do you have a good week? My week is I my prolotherapy is booked for Tuesday. So in a couple of days from now, I'm going to get some needles into the spine. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. I hope it works out for you, man. I make fun yeah. of all of your like fountain of youth stuff, but your back's been driving you nuts for two decades. So I really hope it works. This one I'm really excited for. It sounds positive. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting <laughs> it's decent guaranteed things. to work. <laughs> no, it, it, it'll be, I mean, I already know it's going to be something that is, uh, something that I have to probably do over the next three to six months. Like I'll probably take anywhere from two to six, uh, appointments. But okay. um, it's supposed to after that be quite like long term lasting. So I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I went to the Bandits game, went and oh, took right. some friends of ours and Chris uh, to the first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, that I... sounds so great. I took <laughs> people friend. I like, but I also took Chris. I also took Chris. I don't know how to say it without saying like we took we took we went with another couple and Chris. We went with it, we're all friends. Right. OK, everybody's friends. There were five of us that went. We basically, Chris's parents pay us a lot of money to be his friend. Tons of money. Mm -hmm. uh, but so it was the first, I think I heard that it was the first large event to happen in BC was wow. this, the Bandits game on, what was it, Wednesday night. And I think they had, they said it was sold out, but they were, capacity was much lower because of how much they could actually sell. I want to say sure. there were 1,500 to 2,000 people there. And you came home with COVID. Congratulations. No, we wore a mask when we walked around in places and took yes. our mask off in our seats. Uh, I'm actually the full two weeks on Monday, but I still, I don't mind wearing a mask out in public. Yeah, good. Yeah, same. I took the kids out to get a nephew uh, birthday gift today. And because we're in stage three, I'm comfortable having them out in public. We went to Walmart, picked a couple things. It was good. I just told them to not it touch like anything. It's still like 80% of people are wearing masks. I feel like most people are still wearing them, which is fine. Yeah. I think it's great. But there's still those people, the people that aren't. They're still walking down the wrong way. Like our, all of our stores out here, I don't know what it's like anywhere else. So, but we have like stores put like one way traffic arrows. Those arrows are annoying as crap. They, they are don't make because any I sense. never like, I never think of looking at them, but it's always the people that don't care. Oh, they're going not, the wrong yeah, way. Right. As they're coughing and sneezing yeah, and licking like things that they want kids. Past, high five in you. <laughs> <laughs> they've like wiped their mouth like their face. yeah things are going uh, it in was a good cool direction. Though. it was cool to see a lot of people in a you know in an event and having them cheering and stuff it was really cool how the bandits do they won they're now five and two ha huh. they're huh. I know, third Stanley place Cup parade right coming to bc no it's fun it was really fun to watch a game and have like human beings be there yeah yeah what else i okay so I, i'm supposed to go on vacation in a week Right. Yes. There is a massive fire right now in All Kamloops. Right. It's actually right between Kamloops and Sun Peaks. And it's 515 hectares. Like it's, it's pretty big. Uh -huh. And there's only one road up to Sun Peaks. And that road right now is closed at one point. RCMP yeah. have actually closed the road. But I talked to the guy who would like the company that we're doing our, our vacation rental through. And they're kind of stuck right now. And they have to play everything week by week. So... He can't, he can't make a decision yet if he's going to cancel, if he can cancel our, our reservation. And then, but then I was also saying like, let's say they don't and they open it up and the road opens up. Are we going up to sit there and smoke for a week? Yeah. Right? Cause it's, it's not, not gonna like the fire's going to be really out. healthy for a while. Right. Yeah. And then also, are we going to spend a week constantly being worried that we got to pack all of our shit up and 
evacuate. Might be worth so, just canceling. My in laws used well, we to live can't, in though. fire. We would just country. lose our money. Hmm. So it's almost six grand just gone. So we're trying to find out. He's like, well, you could. We, um, he was really nice, and he's like, if you want to change it to a different part of the summer, you can just pay thirty nine bucks and rebook it. And I'm like, that's really nice of him, but that means I all of a sudden just have to find another week to take off because we're already that time is already yeah off. Like we're done. We're we're gonna. Could you per se sell that week? You know what I mean? Like, say, hey, can you fill this up and then have them pay so that, you know, he still gets the money? Is there, is it that type of setup? It sounds like I'm not going to know until right before we're supposed to leave if they're going to be canceling it or not. And then we would get a 100% refund, which he said. If, if the Very RCMP nice. has the road closed off, we get a 100% refund. Okay. But I might not find that out until like one day before our vacation. Yeah. And we, we've looked into, maybe we'll just go up to Whistler for the week instead. And there's places available but for how many people we need and the size of the house we're looking for, yeah. there's not a ton of choices. And it's not like I want to book that and see what it's just a really yeah. awkward situation. So, but yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah. That's a lot of money to be nervous. We're just about. sitting waiting yeah. to see what happens. So yeah, yeah. not sure what's going to happen yet. Hopefully we're still, we're going on some sort of vacation. And it's not going to rain at all before then. No, the weather's not looking great for that. We were joking though, that if, if the, if this gets canceled, we're, they're just coming to our house with their kids and we're just going to drink and hang out in the backyard. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Hire babysitters while there's that's like right. six adults wasted yep. in the living room. Yep. That's right. Uh, that's anyway, sweet. it, uh, yeah, it was good. Oh, my kid got his, uh, N. Really? He yep, got his finally. N? Okay. So people, Driving. um, we have a progressive driver's license system. So what Justin's saying is his kid got his, he can drive on part, his own full fledged license now. Good yeah, for him. Me. When do you yep. get it? uh earlier this week he did the oh, test and he the very so next cool. day he had to drive to work so i was like dude you got it now you're out and so he <laughs> kick him and, in the he, and he works on the opposite side of town yeah, so he, he had does. to drive like through the city same to get job to as it. before a different job uh vaccine clinic oh okay so done with the old yeah, yeah place he's done we with used that to pick him up at all right mm -hmm. so yeah he had to drive and uh and then drive himself home and that yeah, was good I, it's right, so man. good so good yeah it was a good week. What was he like burning out? He's like leaving. No, man. He is, I'm, strips I was on laughing at him <laughs> that I'm, he's the one I'm comfortable with. That's right. Uh, my next one, the, the 11 year old is going to be a nightmare. Just like you. <laughs> yeah. You were uh, crazy. Think, you, you had yeah. a lead foot, man, for a long I time. Was, yeah. The probe. How can you not? <laughs> Automated. <laughs> yeah. The Ford probe. <laughs> the Ford probe. <laughs> Automated seatbelts. Oh. oh, we were too cool. Anyway, this, uh, this week was good, but we have a lot to talk about. Did you have we anything do. POE week related? Uh, I have one thing that I wanted yeah, to point me. out. I had a POE week. Nobody cares. We have a lot that we want to talk about. Um, but this week in POE on, actually, I did have. Backup started. I just looked down. Oh, son of <laughs> I'm you. I'm so bad at it. I need to give how, you access how, to the button. <laughs> did you actually back up start back up on our bk episode last yeah, week that, half an hour in were you actually yes. late or were you joking no i was actually late on that one. <laughs> i'm so <laughs> glad it worked frick i hate you okay so wait this week no how was my poe week it actually makes me nervous because I, I can't open edition right now it should be showing me something it doesn't say it's crashed she it says it's running i'm gonna just click it and we're good okay continue how was your week okay so i only have three things um okay. my son I don't remember when I was playing because I don't even think I played this week, but he came up to me one day and he's like, dad, I wish there was a way to get rid of tar referring to path of exile. Like oh, he's going awesome. and he's he playing right. and it's like, so yeah, 100%. Like you have to be the mm -hmm. jug. That's the yep. only way to get rid of tar. Unless there's you like can some wear sort of boots. unique. What boots? Oh, can't be oh, slow. Boots. Same thing. It yep. does like the same mod, right? Can't be. It's basically, you just can't be moved less than your base your default speed, speed or whatever. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. But tar. Oh my goodness. It's Calm the worst, roots. worse than chill, worse than temporal chains. Like just, it is. Oh. Anyway. So my son wished it. He's six. Smart. GGG. He knows. Okay. Really? He if knows. a six year old knows. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. But I have a lot of, uh, nope. I'll save that for later. I had two Reddit posts this week. Oh, my suggestions this, are like eh? flying. Oh, it's good. So my first oh one was a joke post, a half joke, half not joke post about Val City. It was you talked about this last week or two what? weeks ago. I didn't post. Did I? Yeah. No. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think anyway, this was two weeks ago. Yeah. It got a lot of criticism. People were not People very were nice like, yet. how do you not understand the map yet? There's only four layouts. And if it's one of these four layouts, you go this direction. Oh, then. it was last and week because BK said that she had a link. Uh, which oh, speaking right. of, she yes. never sent okay, to us. Okay, so I'm sorry Rude. for repeating myself. There were a lot of very helpful people that oh, responded. Good. There were a lot of absolute pricks that responded. But it got nicely upvoted. So maybe On Reddit? It, maybe, huh. maybe it got some attention. A GG, I don't know. Like, remember when you had to pick up the three busts um, yep. Marcus in Act for 3? Marcus. And it was tedious and annoying. Nothing wrong with the layout, but it was tedious and annoying. So then they changed yep. it so that the three busts were in three separate maps, but they were all on one map. Yep. I'm kind of hoping for a similar mentality with Val City. It doesn't need to be huge. Anyway. I don't think that's going to change. I would rather see the Firefly change before the Val City change. Ooh, no, not me. Because what that's if you actually had to pick one? You had to Val pick City. one. Hands down, what? Val City. Just give me a waypoint. Listen, Frenzy told us a long time ago about a way to get through Val City, and it's worked for me every time. Every time? Yeah, well, but I don't know that that's actually true. My problem's remembering. <laughs> so, I, so, okay, so apparently I only had one Reddit post this week. This one okay. said, I'd love to be able to disable some portals. I brought it up lots here, uh, 100%. but never actually, like, I got to start stop what, pretending you mean, that ggg listens to this doesn't count <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right like i i want ggg to listen to this they're probably not so i gotta start putting these things i'm wishing out on reddit so anyway it's a good wish uh, it got one upped a ton there was very few people that are like why would you want to do that just don't like, buy it you, you can write you can run a script for that <laughs> I'm like i don't know i just, just ah. anyway so it, it, it got some positive feedback so that was nice and that was it. That was my POE week. I assume you didn't have one? Nope. I waited for the announcement. I sat back and chilled. Sweet. So yep. this week in POE then, uh, obviously there's some big news, but uh, there was one that I wanted to point out. It was a Reddit post. What did it say? So somebody posted, I'm calling it. Chris is going to apologize for this massive meta change that he's announced. He's going to tweet it, say it was a bad move on their part, and it shouldn't have happened. Like... It, whether it's a joke or not, I don't know. But Chris actually responded. And his only response, the only thing he said in brackets, nervous laughter. <laughs> he's, he's like, oh. oh, he responded to the Reddit post. Yeah, he responded okay, to the Reddit post. Funny. Just like, he's like, I'm going to call it. He's going to apologize. He's going to regret it. And Chris just responds with. <laughs> so kind of The funny. only other two things that happen besides the big stuff is we got a list of the favorite trial master lines. And that FYI, ultimate men soon. Yeah, in case you didn't in case know. you weren't aware. <laughs> i wonder how many people would actually listen to this podcast what? that aren't aware. <laughs> yeah that's right that aren't aware of the timeline that's right that would be kind of funny actually you, i guess what, i guess that could happen yeah, I guess that could so. happen with somebody who's new yeah but okay so there are npcs coming and we'll get to them and i'm excited for them because ggg nails their npcs and Always. i am going to be sad to miss the trial master like for his that, lines for sure oh well yeah hands down that's that's <laughs> i'm talking about him as from an NPC perspective him, right so. yeah <laughs> it's a myth but i'm oh that cynicism and sarcasm and arrogance and just oh i oh i love it it makes me laugh joking about the fact that we didn't fight him and mostly because did you see we got a i mean thank you to the listener for the five star review but he said they might not be in the top five percent of players and i was like well <laughs> why thank you i'll take that <laughs> no they it's awesome, it was awesome. it's it is great it oh, is super great. kind and i'm very comfortable with yeah we're with good my where abilities we are. in that of excel we appreciate honest <laughs> we're reviews right where we want to be <laughs> that's right <laughs> No, that was it. Was a very kind review. It so was thank an awesome you very much. Review. Yep, individual La- lawns and bubble text. I think is what they mentioned. <laughs> yeah, bubble numbers. It's catching on. Numbers. Combat it's not. text is so lame. Okay, so let's get into it. Obviously, we had the three fifteen announcement. First off, I have to say, I know they talked about it on Ziggy's thing, and I hope they never, ever, ever stop doing it this format. Yes, it is so much better than them going through the media, letting the media post their stuff, and we just get a forum thread. I don't even care that 90% of their stuff is pre-recorded. It's awesome. It is. I love being a part of something li- to us that's live. You know, you texted me and you're like, hey, just a heads up. It's in 30 minutes, which was perfect. I took a break, threw it on my TV and had lunch and got to watch it. It's a nice long lunch. Good for you. Yeah, I didn't. I had to watch the rest of it later, but uh, oh, okay. it, was, it was just fun to 
I like that so much more than them putting out a p- fucking UPS. <laughs> You were only expecting one and UPS. I was only expecting one. Get it, giving you even a... better service. It's there earlier. Go get it. Yep. Go get it. Uh, I, I'll check on my kids. I'll go. You go get it. Okay. All right. And through the magic of editing, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I really, I don't actually remember exactly where we were because that was four hours ago, but uh, <laughs> uh, I really, really like this format. It's so enjoyable to be able to watch yeah, it. Right, right. I love the way they do it. I get that it takes a lot of work, but to me, it's it, it's worth it because I think it's a really cool thing that brings a community in. I think the amount of work it takes is probably worth the value they get from it from a marketing sure. standpoint. Even the cost and the time compared to the actual run of going through California. Yeah, I, it's just so much more fun, especially for your own players. For us, it's more interactable. You know what I mean? It's a more personal experience for the fan. And great news, though, Bex is okay. Like, I know it I know, sounds nice. really silly, but people were We've really been talking worried. About and it. I, I, yeah. I was really hoping she was We've okay, too, about, yeah. especially because, what, a year ago, there was a big talk about how, like, just mental health and awareness just within yeah, how tough. you're treating people. So yeah. I'm glad it was just because she's been working more as a she's doing on all the marketing, marketing stuff. stand in po- so yeah 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 mm-hmm. no it's cool really exciting for her anyway three fifteen was announced what what are we gonna talk about what do you want to start with <sighs> well I don't know let's just go in the order that they had stuff but I had a it's couple things Expedition. I wanted to say it is yes three fifteen yep. is called Expedition I'm excited man I got a lot of stuff to say so all right sorry you for your editing standpoint but. Man, they always put on a good show. And even before they did these types of Twitch layouts for us, their trailers, like it honestly, it doesn't matter if I liked the previous league, if I hated the previous league, I have complaints, whatever it is, every single trailer I see, I'm in, I'm stoked, I'm excited. I can't, they're so good at just nailing what it is I like about the game. It's like, it's almost like they, they refocus all of our attention back to the core reasons you play skills trees ascendancies theory crafting so i get i get music again was on point too yeah so good. always now mm-hmm. one thing i do want to say though since we're talking about the reveal it was a huge reveal not just the not the league per se but what's happening with this league so i, I just think wanna... the league was actually the smaller announcement out of all the other stuff and it's not even their end game change, which is coming next league. But mm-hmm. I just want to remind people that are listening. I'm sure, I mean, I know you're listening already later. You've already had your feedback and had your talks with the people that you know about the game. But just remember that balance and mechanical changes aren't meant to make the game better for how you're playing today. It's meant to make the game better. And sometimes that means we have to change our play style. And, and, and that's okay. You know what I mean? I know there's always going to be a lot of people like, oh, but this is going to really screw up this kind of build or this kind of thing or how I play this way. And that, that's OK. It just means we have to change like this meta screws me over these meta changes that we're going to talk about. How I play has to dramatically change and I have to come up with a new default method of playing. Yeah, and I, we're, we're going to talk about like the changes and stuff coming up. You're just giving like a preface to. I am. I am. Because, not OK, well, yeah, because. When you go in with the mentality, it's like, okay, these changes are for the best of the game. Oh, shoot. I got to change something. All right. How can I change it? As opposed to, I don't like it because it doesn't fit my way. It, you know, like you can still like the game, even though the changes are met. Like they're really like hurting my normal play style. But I think GGG, it's amazing. Oh, I can't. And I want to talk about it when we down. get to it. GGG knows their pros and cons. Like when they're buffing stuff and nerfing stuff, like they know that it's not like any of these. You mean they're not trying to wreck their game. Right, right. So just keep in mind, they're thinking long term and fans, they never, ever know what long term is. Like we know PoE 2 is coming out and we know that they want this game to last forever. That's all we know about the future. So a lot of these changes they know they're making for the sake of future changes that we don't know anything about. But I love that they're willing to make huge changes, huge changes. I, they have the guts to do it and they're doing it and they can't change everything they want to. Like how long have we been talking about flasks? Leagues and leagues and leagues. Okay, so this is the league that they're doing it. So they can't change everything. But man, when they present it that the way that they did. I actually think when you say that they're, when you say that they're willing to, I, I agree with you, but I also think that they've pussyfooted towards this for a long time and now finally gone like, no, we need to actually start 
taking a stand on this. And I'm, I'm totally for that. I'm, I mean, I messaged you saying that I love when they nerf stuff because it gives us content because typically people, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people start to, you know, scream and cry about stuff. But I, I think it's good for the game. And, and like Chris said a few times, if when, when the goal is to have a game that you're playing for a long term, you have to do stuff to sometimes rein things in. You can't just keep pushing the numbers up. It just doesn't work. So, and, I'm, and I'm the timing pumped. of it has to make sense with everything else too, right? Like they were saying, and we'll get to this at a later point, but that the changes, putting all these changes together made sense, right? If you sure. are going to make a change to something, it still needs to coincide with how the game functions. And so there's a reason that they were hesitant to bring in some of these changes earlier because it didn't really coincide well with how gameplay worked. And so when you have all these changes coming together at once, it does make sense. And he really explained things really well, very compassionately as well. Like it's really hard to argue with their common sense of it when you're coming from their perspective. So what do you think of the trailer? Let's get down to it. What do you think of the trailer? Awesome. I, I love the teaser too. So there was no way I wasn't going to like the trailer. I, I really, I, I don't know. They, I'm with you. They do such a great job. Every time you get into it, it explains the league well here's why and this just goes back to me saying why i like this format what it used to be is we would watch the trailer and then we'd be reading through a forum post and now we're watching a trailer going straight into chris talking about it it's not like and we're now getting the actual detail of what we just watched in the trailer and what will be coming with the league i it i just really like it i the trailer to me was super fun i, I always get hyped watching their trailers though i'm with you it doesn't matter what the league is i may hate the league later but the trailer is always going to be good yeah, those their drums just kick the crap out of him. Oh man! And then you yeah. get like the the focus, of course, on the on the NPCs. So I'm excited to see them, even if some of them are boring. Like that's okay; <laughs> they don't all have to be epic. I have my com my concerns about the NPCs, and we'll talk about that pretty soon too. But I still the trailer's still awesome. I love seeing them. You, you know what excited me was the Calgurans. That's the like the new faction or whatever yeah, it is. I heard the, I heard the name. But, it didn't mean much but, to me. No, but it doesn't mean I don't know lore stuff either. But there's now there's like a new a new group of people that are as they far new? As I know, oh yeah, I don't because know. they, I, they like, everybody has to wait for Noodles' video to show up. I know because they said they used to be there. I are there is there like past information that I know someone's typing right now? Like you idiots! <laughs> <laughs> it was on this unique, you fools. But anyway, yeah, so that was cool, kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Justin, mm. no timers. Yeah, yeah. Nothing the expedition is, is interesting. timed. You can take your time to make choices, both with the NPCs when you're placing your flags for explosives. Uh, everybody, we're we're assuming you've already seen the trailer. If you mm -hmm. haven't, we're not going to explain it to you. You can go watch it, then come back and listen. Uh, you can even take your time and portal out, come back in. Like, there's no timer. How nice. How nice, like half the master missions are timed, delirium's timed, like so much good content is about doing it fast. So well, it definitely seems like they're, they're doing things to slow it down a bit. I am, I, I assume you'll have to clear the area first, like, cause otherwise you might get bugged by other mobs coming in, you know, while you're trying to sort it all out. But I do like the fact that it is something you just, when you, I, you know, I watched this and I am pretty sure I haven't, I don't know, I haven't listened to anybody's feedback. I've barely been able to keep up with Discord, but I really liked watching the player in the trailer. It was the trailer, I think, or the gameplay, I can't remember, but look around to figure out where they were going to put it and sorting that out. And then you're going to have to think about these remnants and these other things. I like that. And I get, and I'm a player who does prefer to be fast, but I like to know what I'm doing think it out and it, it to me is very blighty without towers and i like that i'm i like mm, the fact yeah. that i'm going to control what's going to happen and then i play it and i fight it and whatever happens from there so i i to me i'm fine with it being slow in a map because it's not taking me out of the map i'm still within the map and i it, it'll be interesting to see how it how it goes i do think the three second timer as cool as it might look is a little little bit much for the actual delay but they mentioned it they'll figure yep. it out they yeah. will fix it i'm sure so here's here's something though because you were talking about like selections and stuff and that'll come into mods do you know yeah, the rim do you remember when from monopoly what is it that i hate in monopoly oh well, you like when we make uh deals and stuff <laughs> i love uh, i love to go immunities. yes see yeah. i hate immunities 
why are they doing that? And, I don't and I, I, I don't understand why there's a value to it. Why can't you make it another one? He mess. He, so he brought it up. What what Tyler's talking about is there's a, a remnant. You have to be careful about what remnants you select to be exploded because they will have an effect on the monsters and then the additional monsters, the subsequent monsters that will spawn. They all get affected by that. And one of the ones he mentioned was, you know, you could get one that's immune to physical damage. And I was, as soon as he said it, I was like, no, not entirely. Like that can't actually be just straight up immune to physical damage. If Ziggy brought it up in his thing, I understand his reasoning where he says, well, we want you to actually have to think about it. But I actually think Ziggy was right. Are, you're basically just making something that you either just do or don't do. And why not make it so it's a challenge or it's, I, it's, it's just not about weird pros and cons. It's can and can't. That's so dumb. It's very odd. I was surprised by that one. Like, it's not even like, like if, if you're immune to physical reflect, you still can't do it. That's crazy. I, I, I just one. don't understand the concept that that like to me, I wish there was in their world, in their decision making, a no immunities rule. Like come up with whatever crazy crap you want for mods or make game them super mechanics, resistant, but have but not some immune. Rule. right, right. I agree. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they said that we're, it's supposed to be. It's not going to be a common mod, and no, and you don't have to do it. You can choose not to do it. But it's still a game full of randomizations, and well, look at some of the other RNG stuff that the community hasn't been a fan of. They were fine with the RNG numbers for the Trial Master boss fight. Okay, so what if this on the opposite end, physical reflex shows up all the time, or not physical reflect, immune to shows up a lot more than they thought. Okay, so even if they change it, that's still two weeks of however long. I also think what's going to happen is you're going to have, I love when he's like talking to Ziggy and he's like, well, we know people read the modifiers for the maps. And I was like, hmm, I don't think that's true. I think people try to, but quite often people will die to a reflect where they weren't thinking or didn't notice it because it's a ton of tiny little writing. This would suck if you're trying to do it and all of a sudden you drop where it's going to explode accidentally onto something that is one of those. And even more so when you're talking about the maps later on that you can roll that is essentially like opening a blighted map, but now you're doing an expedition. If you had one of those, because you have to remember the way they said it is if the, the explosion happens se sequentially and all the monsters after follow the mods that are before them. So if you accidentally hit something that's, uh, you know, immune to physical, your map is just useless. You can't even do it if you're a physical. I, I blame the player when it comes to mod reading. Like that's just if you want to play sure. fast and apathetic. But I'm well, just saying people yeah, do good it. Luck. Oh, totally, totally. But I don't like accidentally not being able to do content. So, for example, I'm going to build a metamorph and it's crazy hard. I can't do it. My fault. But for there to be content, uh, so and, and, anyway, do you want to know, you know where, where you're right? Exactly right is when you val a map and it changes the map modifier to have something that now is actually impossible. It's like, OK, great. I needed this tier 16 red map to be corrupted, but now you've made it that it's impossible. I just can't. Yeah. You can't finally run. get val temple or val city and you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, no, like I, I, I won't get ahead of myself. That's the only thing I didn't like. We'll see what it's like. Maybe I'll never see it. And fantastic. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of fun. Right. So anyway, is chaos damage the only one that completely would negate both of those. If you had one that was immune to physical and immune to elemental, because chaos is neither. No chaos hits. No, but it's not a physical damage and it's not a elemental right. damage. And there's nothing about reflect or immune to chaos in the so game. Just so play far. chaos then. And then you're fine. Maybe, maybe Unless they, they say added immune it. to chaos. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No kidding. Immune to brand new skills. <laughs> Please use old skills to beat this. Uh, so NPCs. Yeah, so that's cool. So you're going to be trading with them. And they all have different methods of acquiring mods and or items. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And then the boss guy has stuff that affects all of the underlings that you can use towards them. Uh, it is cool. It's very ritual plus almost um, betrayal crafting type stuff because you can um, randomize some crafts on them. You want to know the, I, I think it's really cool. I'm really excited more so to play it because it's really hard to say with what we saw. I'm going to take a couple, couple, couple extra points here from your thing and tie them all in. I love that they're including an expedition locker and I love that they're throwing an affinity to the locker. 
But I, this should be, and I, I, maybe we won't know till we play it, but to me, this should be metamorph style and it's automatically picked up. The fact that they've added like five new splinters that I'm going to have to pick up makes me really not happy. Well, considering people were complaining about picking up just the one tab worth, one type of currency from metamorph. Yeah, the road and then they oh, changed metamorph, it, yeah. right? So now you have four? That, that, yeah. that is, so hopefully it's, it's not a lot much. like rogue markers for example these remind me of rogue markers you're again you're going to have four different types of rogue markers and they each apply to a different npc i hope that it's really easy to manage because i would hate for them to the that currency to be rare so you have to pick up every single one because you need every ounce of it to interact with the npcs and then because you have to pick them up, it's that much more. Like it just seems very tedious. So I hope, I hope it's done well. I hope it's done well. In we the haven't example touched that they showed on the video, the, by the time the person was doing the third trade, they were already up over a thousand splinters for the cost to do the next trade. So, and they showed that they, some of them stacked upwards, I think 1,000 and I think one was maybe two or 5,000. So they stack quite high, which is fine. In your, in but your inventory, hopefully when they drop too yeah i, I j just the idea of adding four additional splinters i love that they're adding the locker i really think that's great i love affinity's going to work into it but i would like it even more if it was metamorph style i think I, I we haven't played it so it's hard to say but i'm never a fan of them throwing extra shit on the ground for us to pick up especially league related that you have to pick up if you want to play the league and so it made me a little nervous about the idea like when they showed it i was like no 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 this is not something that would make somebody happy like hey We've got four or five new splinters for you to get. No, not a fan. But I, it'll be interesting to see how the trading works for them. I feel like it's going to be another thing like Ultimatum, though, where you're really, really cool early. You know what I mean? Like, here's your, here's your way. I don't know. We'll have to see what it's like endgame. But how often are you, how often are you, I just feel like, and when you get towards the end of the game, it's much less likely for you to have found that item in like an Ultimatum, for example, right? Where, I don't know. We'll see. It, the thing that they, I think they did an awesome job with is their NPCs are everywhere. It seemed like the NPCs are in the town act hubs. You can put them in your hideouts. I don't, yep. Um, so to me, that's, that's fantastic. How or when their inventory refreshes, um, like if it's based well, on one level of them, up or if you it. have to spend a specific currency orb specifically for that, I don't know. But accessing them isn't going to be a pain, which for example, like something heist. like heist is a massive pain. So that, that's, that's really, really nice. And they're adding the quality of life for lockers to core. So even something like heist is now getting the affinity system affinity. that you mentioned. Super great. Yeah. Love it. So it's, I, I'm hoping it's easy to interact with them. I'm hoping that the currency for each individual NPC isn't rare so that if you wanted to be like, listen, I really want that item. I'm just going to pay that guy that likes to negotiate. I'm just going to pay a max price because I really want it. I hope it's that easy because if it is really rare, it might be something that I bypass. I don't think it will be rare. Well, I like I'm big into loot, but I'm big into killing. You know what I mean? And my big issue with Harvest was how much time I had to spend not mapping. So I hope that the NPC interaction is worth not mapping. I agree with you. I just, my concern is that if it isn't, I don't think it will be rare, but when it's not rare, if I have to pick up four or five stacks of these splinters each time I do one, it's just going to get a little bit annoying, especially if it's blight ish and it's like, well, you dropped here, up here, over there, down there. So now I got to run to all these different locations to pick stuff up. I we'll see. It's hard to say because we haven't seen it, but I, I don't think I'm going to like that part of it. They have new locations though, right? It's like brand new maps that aren't the normal maps, right? Those log books, they're basically maps, kind of like how you get a blighted map, but they're actually new areas, new layouts, interactable areas. When they showed the log book, yeah. I know probably some people don't like that. That actually made me excited where you, where you were picking between the two expeditions and it yeah. was totally new and you were finding some information from the NPC in the top left. I, I was like, that's actually fun i know that it takes you out of mapping i know that it takes you out of the zoom zoom but i, I i'm fine with that i do like that it's like a different type of atlas to a different yeah. type of map yeah i do like it for I'm, sure i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that they'll actually be fun 
and from looking at them they I, again they remind me very much of a blight map but without having i don't have to go back and click all these stupid yeah, yeah. towers i get to build it once then run it yeah and i that to me is exactly what blight would have been great as and now this one i couldn't quite tell if it was league specific or core or what but if it is league specific i'd highly doubt they would go through this and not make it core but they've added a fourth defense type so yeah, evasion they totally stole it <laughs> it's awesome uh yeah sure that's that's uh what's the epoch last epoch yeah so it's while awesome. last epoch tried to steal energy shield last epoch stole everything it, they all oh, steal 100%. stuff it all comes yeah, back yeah, down yeah. to like diablo and who, i don't even know what diablo stole it from i'm sure yeah. something so so there's normally evasion armor and energy shield as the defense types that are they're not implicit so i guess they're just defenses on items right mm -hmm. and then so now they're adding a fourth one ward ward and what does it do it takes it takes the damage from the initial hit right but then, then it has it a five second five cooldown seconds. so it's not like yeah and i guess there's ways to invest in it and not but it can you imagine if you can make it so that 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 refresh timer you can reduce the refresh timer from less than five seconds that'd be pretty crazy i mean you can do the res i mean they're they're really smart with how they do that like how often do you see mods where you can reduce the amount of time it takes for your energy shield to actually start is it no is it recharging i think it's recharging right like those aren't very common mods there's very few nodes on the tree uh, what i'm kind of excited so you know if they were to do that with something like ward you know i'm sure it'd be just as rare as that but i'm kind of like if this actually goes core and they're keeping the other three defenses long term which i assume they would i assume all of a sudden you're getting into more split types right like ward and evasion ward and armor ward and es and woo boy i don't think ward will become like armor evasion in cs it will become something you supplement with it because there were very limited armor slots that will that can roll or with ward as it like it wasn't every single slot that could have it so to me it seemed like they were much more focused on this is something you're tying in with some other form of defense and it's kind of fun i'm really curious i hope that it goes core and i hope that it becomes something you can actually plan yeah a, a build around because can you imagine if you can play an evasion based ward setup and you're evading and and not getting hit and then when you do get hit your ward kicked in yeah and that five seconds isn't the end of the world because your evasion you're evasion you're so not going to get cool. hit for another five yeah and then you stack that with dodge like they said it mm -hmm. works well with dodge and evasion characters but the actual look of those items they didn't show it okay uh, sorry they didn't actually show you what ward will look like though on your ui no not as the actual i wanted to see se. that oh, i wanted yeah, to yeah. see like is it going to show on my life pool is it going to like where is it going to show i hope they do something cool with it oh i'm sure they will when they added um petrified blood and they have the claws yeah, going awesome. around the health bar yeah i don't put it past them they'll make it look rad but the actual base types like how the base types look the picture of them all the items they displayed look really pretty. They look pretty epic. So, did you think so? Okay. Oh, shut up. You're all right. Chris talked about. I like. Hold on. No, no, we're not skipping this yet. I like the. I, I like that they showed a couple of the uniques. They don't normally do that, and we've talked about that. Normally, I'm oh, not a right. big fan of it, but I, they did it for the ward specific ones. Man, you put the word battle mage in anything, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and Jess is like, yeah. Oh, and don't even get me started because that'll come later. But there's one skill that is battle mage epic. But there's only one that. Oh, I was thought you were gonna say. No, one no, I like. have like out of the 19 new skills, I think I'm gonna bring up. 18. I like like 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we never care about the new skills, hey? We always skip past it this time. I'm just we're gonna not. tell you right now, mine is the stun one. We'll talk about it later. But right. I was like, I don't care. Co-op. Now this is something this that is the Ziggy should be yes this is something that should be part of your rules when you launch a co-op game it shouldn't take seven years to get here but i'm thankful i'm thankful that we're finally there because we've complained about co-op some good co-op leagues some horrible co-op many co horrible co-op leagues i'm really really glad that ziggy no matter how high he is on the echelon and totem pole of path of exile he he likes a lot of the same stuff that you and I do. He, he plays, plays his, with his partner. his partner, yeah, tons. And so co-op's always a focal it's point important. of his questions. For the people that wanted somebody new to do the interview, Ziggy's awesome. Ziggy's awesome. But he asked about co-op, and Chris said that now a good 
and rewarding co-op experience is a requirement for every league. Yeah, but I didn't like that he threw in the fact that he's like, we've had a lot of great ideas, but they're not multiplayer friendly, so we're not doing them. Because that was like, to me, that was like opening the door a bit for people to go, well, I don't want multiplayer. I like to play single player. I want to know what those ideas were. I, I like the fact that they're at least putting some thought and foresight into multiplayer and party play, because even if we don't do it every time, it's so much nicer to know that it's a possibility. I will say, though, that's really nice. I think they should continue to tie it into the leagues, but they're still a very large part of their core game that does not work very well for party play. So it's unfortunate that the co having a good co-op experience is a new requirement, but I'm glad it's there. So hopefully going forward, that Maybe new December. requirement will start Maybe leaking the into the core game, right? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Atlas is the only, my only, that's where I'm talking about it. Like they're, the Atlas progression is not co-op friendly. It, map completion is, but quest completion is not. And I care about quest completion just as much as anybody. Mm-hmm. Chris was talking about picking up, though, like picking up items, yeah. how big stacks were. And you mentioned before he even said that how small or how like large certain stacks looked and how few st- stacks there, there was were. There was a large rogue marker stack that surprised right. me. Right. So Chris said that there should be, for the sake of interaction and you feeling like you're getting a big amount of rewards, you don't want just one big pile of something. You do want to pick up a few things because you want to feel like there's a lot, but He's kind of going on to the fan side now of, but I, we know you don't want to pick up a thousand piles of one thing just so that you feel like you're, you've, you know, been rewarded with a lot. So he said there should be something around like two should be the maximum amount of pile if you have like a duplicate currency that's dropped. Like if you've had a lot of, what did they use in this one? I don't know, pretend it's Parandas coins. Instead of having sure. six drops of large stacks, you're going to have two, lar- two large stacks of Parandas coins. I don't know if this talk was or if he was referencing specifically league content from the league drops, but hopefully that mentality leaks into core as it goes all the way through. So my understanding from his conversation was that it was a core thing, that that was based on everything now, but I also still, I, I very much disagree with him. I would much rather pick up one pile of 700 Parandis coins than two piles of 350. It, that, that, it's, not, it's, it's not like it's more exciting for me to pick up two 350s. In fact, I love the idea of seeing a larger number. And if you're so into this whole idea of two pile pickups, then don't make them bigger. Let them be small. But when you pick one up, they all suck in and it shows you that, you know, you picked up 700 Parandis coins. I just, I don't think he's right. Just this is my personal opinion. I, I don't actually think that that's more fun to pick up two 350s. I, there's already enough stuff to pick up. Yeah, there's already a like sword and a one. shield and a chaos orb that's also there that I also want to pick up. So that my reward for variety is already there. I like that they're cutting it down. I just agree. One more step. Cut it in half and we're there. I yeah. cut it in half. We'll two. see what it's like. We'll see what it's like. And then uh, after the league launch and we'll complain some more. So help me. You know he's gonna ha- you know what's gonna happen though now. Reddit is gonna be full of posts of three drop. You know, like, yeah, hey, yeah. there's three Parandis coins or there's three scrolls of wisdom or something. You know what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, that's right. And so instead of there being five scrolls of wisdom, it's a one, two, and a two. <laughs> yeah, people are going to be like, you said. <laughs> They're going to freak out. I know it's going to happen. And I mean, I saw a picture of the boss, one of the bosses. I mean, we all did. It was in the trailer. But man, that like Grim Reaper skeleton looking boss. Yeah, looks it comes awesome. out of like the smoke. Yeah, even the fat pudgy one, it looked like the butcher from Dark Souls 1, kind yeah. of. Oh, mm-hmm. man. But they're RNG again. So hopefully, uh, like it sounded like this RNG It was RNG weird the way they explained right, it. Right. Yeah. It seemed like it. it's not going to be as complained about, I guess. I don't know. It, he didn't seem worried about it this time. It's not like they're unaware how the fans feel about how inaccessible the Trial Master was last league. Well, yes, but they also, they also didn't agree. You know, like when they made their post, they were very much on the opposing side of that, that uh, opinion. But it, it, they're listening to his comment and then Rory's comment and then him trying to translate Rory's comment. It was pretty funny because they were very much on different. I didn't get a sense of a real answer as to like how the bosses will work, but I don't actually care. The fact is there's more than one boss, which is sweet, super fun. And it seems like at least from what I understood from what Rory was saying and Chris said it a little bit. I, I love the fact that in an expedition, you may find an area where you blow up a wall. 
or you take down a tree and that leads you into a boss a different oh that's awesome yeah very cool i love that like interacting with environments is something that they started when they added a couple new maps last league or the league before right like you touch the coffin and then the souls come out and they burst through the wall and then you go into the boss and they kind of did it in delve it was a little bit in delve too oh, like where I you guess, had to blow yeah, up a blow wall, up wall if you wanted to go i guess this it way. started way back it's then. just fun yeah i think it's cool it seems very poe too -y. so anyway overall thoughts for me on expedition is i'm excited it does seem like we kind of whined about some stuff. I think we were just nervous about some things, but I am actually no. really excited for how things are going to place. I love that it's co-op friendly, so they say. I love that it's not timer based. Like it, it's it's Tyler friendly. So I'm quite excited about it. And I'm actually not going to mind interacting with the NPCs as long as it's something that I don't have to spend a long time doing. I like that I'm going to be able to do it in my hideout from the box that it's already into. and. It, the you want to know what is i feel like maybe we had this conversation a little bit going into 314 as well it's really exciting when the league is like the lowest thing i'm most excited for and i'm not not excited for this league I, i'm actually excited to play it i love i get it some people are zoom zoom and they're not going to like it but for me watching that log book open up and seeing between these two choices and how they're going to work when you go it, i i don't care that it slows me down I'm fine with that. If it can keep me playing longer, that's what I want. Yeah, I want to actually play the league for longer. I don't want to feel like, all right, I'm three weeks in. I've got everything I need. I've done the content and the league doesn't have anything else to offer me because in the last number of leagues we've had, it's just repeat, 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 repeat. There's nothing to get towards. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, let's talk some skills. How awesome was it that they used the theme of each ascendancy to create 19 new skills what a what a cool way to go about it they should do that every league like it should be almost easy not like i don't create I, I would, like a, that's kind of sarcastic but how would a great way to like come up with new themes and come up with new skill gems i 100 percent agree with you but it made me laugh when they said it because i remember having conversations with you in the past where you it bothered you that certain skills were made for certain classes and i was like Tyler's going to love this, but I need to make sure I remind him of the fact that we've had conversations <laughs> no, before. It was kind of the opposite. It was that ascendancy nodes were specific to skills. And so if you okay. wanted to use a skill, you basically sure. were almost forced. Like the, the Pathfinder had stuff about the um, Herald of Agony, right? With virulence. And then they had the Guardian that had very but specific that is things kind for of Herald this of is. Purity. But any this one of them can like, use it. Like... we. We, yes, I guess we haven't but, seen the respect tree, but my point is like all these skills that we're excited about, they're not going to be specific. You don't, it's not going to be stupid for you to use them with a different ascendancy. In some of them, it might be in some of them. It might be. And I'm fine with that. I actually did. That doesn't bother me. I just, it made me laugh. It was one of the things I was like, note to self, make sure you bring this up. Okay. So you're going to bring up bone shatter and we'll talk about that right away worst skill in there and not only that and i hear okay i'm gonna just a couple things sorry i like that chris brought up in ziggy's uh interview that they went back and re-recorded some of the skills because he is 100 percent right don't show a skill that is completely decked out completely right, supported yes. and looks unrealistic and then you play it and you're like what the f this is not that skill uh bone shatter could have been <laughs> could have been made a bit better it was so boring it was so Maybe. boring no it was it was a hot, if you if you looked at all of them it was like you're just you're just melee swinging you're not and i get it i get that that's kind of the skill but it looked really dull uh i also am not i've never been a huge like stun duration type player that like i've played the slams and i do like it but it's not something i've built towards but when i looked at all of them yeah that it was the one that i was like uh okay yeah well, you know, it's funny because I love the prospect of stunning enemies. It makes clearing so easy and safe. But this goes back to immunities. Now, I haven't checked boss immunities for forever, but uh, it wasn't that long ago that a lot of key bosses were immune to stun. Yeah, they so fixed that. So I that, never it's cared. A lot better. Is it? Okay, can you actually stun these bosses now? Like Cyrus? Yep. Uh, I don't, I think you can. Okay. Because I'm can, not but, now. Granted, I'm not out there killing my A9 Cyrus with my left hand and my eyes closed. Not a thing. I'm right-handed. Right. That's right. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm I'm not going to consider a build that can't do him. Right. So yep. 
I'm sure someone's going to find something and it's going to be the new meta. I'm sure we're, you know, oh, we're sure, not sure. in that top 5% tie. No, so we right. don't really know. But what I'm saying is I think that one was made specifically for the juggernaut, but that could easily be done with the champion or anything else. Like you don't have to, unless they actually change ascendancies, but they went away from that, right? They changed I don't think the they Templar will. away from being Herald of Purity specific and they changed the Pathfinder. So the only other one that's left is Arcane Surge. I think the Hero Font has specific Arcane Surge stuff, but at least it's not an active skill. It's a multi-purpose support. So anyway, Bone yeah, Shatter, right, it, did, it did look neat. It's not Bone my Shatter. style. Though. Move on. Boring. Uh, but it's neat that they actually have an offensive skill that scales with stun. That's come on. Yeah. That's neat. It's it's shield. Okay, we're, we've, uh, shield. we've talked about bone shatter like 20 minutes way too long. Okay. What's shield crush. One? I love awesome. offensive shield skills. This I is the third said one. That. Yes. He actually talks about like making it a more offensive shield Great. build. I was like, based oh. off of your shield stuff. Oh, I love it. And he's like, it even scales well. Like if you were to use all the shield skills, sweet. Great. It, like, It'll be it even better well. once they let you dual wield shields. Oh, why not? Who can? Yeah. That should be yep. considered dual wielding. If I can be unarmed, I can put a shield yeah, on it. Come on. What the F? So anyway. And then shield charge with shield crush. That's it. That's all I would. It'd be amazing. Obs just. Obs. Yeah. It uh, looks really cool. It shield does. crush looks I'm awesome. I'm excited for it. I'm curious how it's going to be tagged and what its numbers are going to be like. Because uh, I love the prospect of it being good for clear and single target. Uh, Storm Rain. I actually think it's that it's that one skill that you shoot up and Purple it turns it's it's almost it's basically searing bond but lightning for a bow. You have to place them and then it's like lines between, right? Right. So kind of, but yeah. so like that doesn't really interest me. For example, searing bond doesn't interest me unless I can get a hundred of them. Sure. But mm -hmm. Storm Rain has the prospect of GMP, which they showed, and it was just lightning everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, that's great because now you can run around and it's still doing stuff. So it's still lightning. Was that the one where he said that? they need to that it's been changed where they had the, it, the way that it showed it's actually better because it doesn't it works better now than how they showed in the video i don't remember they just never reshot it i think it was because it did look a little odd but the idea behind it's cool yeah it seems cleary <laughs> it seems cleary based you know what i mean mm. like pack clearing sure well maybe not this we'll is going to be way better than searing bond because unless sure. this is a dot which i don't they i don't think they have one doesn't lightning like dot it. in the game mm -hmm. Every single cross, you know what I mean? Like every line is a separate instance of damage, as I would assume. Hopefully. Whereas with Searing Bond, it's not. It, a dot damage doesn't stack from the same skill, so you can't have multiple lines of Searing Bond doing separate instances of damage. So this for a Searing Bond lover would be a different prospect, especially because you can have greater multiple projectiles. Now, Focus Ballista support excited me because i i love the concept of predator support that they added in 3.8 maybe about like focusing your minions on a specific person and so now you have ballista a focused ballista support that's basically the same thing hey shoot here really cool would you use that though i don't see because you still have to be the one that targets the enemy i i know for most yeah. people that play with ballistas it's probably a great i was just thinking for you specifically because you were more wanting to put it down so you can move freely and it does right. its thing. Yeah. So it still wouldn't be for me, but there's a lot of people like when I'm playing my minion builds, there's a lot of people that'll say, oh, I actually don't really like zombies because I want to do something. Like, can I add another skill to do this, whether it's SRS or skeletons or a melee skill, whatever. So this is what for those types of people that like that kind of passive play style or that minion per se style ballistas but you're also interacting as well. So it seems pretty neat. Now, you're probably going to love this. I'm going to guess that this, you wet your pants a little bit, but explosive concoction, that's the skill that scales with flasks. Yeah, where you throw the flasks. I, okay, so I'm, I'm torn a little really? bit on this one. Really? Okay, but here's why. I'm nervous that what I saw was a souped up player. I'm nervous. I know that he said that they didn't, but when you saw someone more into maps playing with it, it seemed, it seemed quite strong. Sure. And when you couple that with the flask changes that are coming, it just makes me a little bit more nervous because a lot of the damage is based on the flasks you're using, the charges you have. Right. So I'm not really sure. I love the idea of it though. I mean, I, you never played, but League of Legends, it reminds me of like playing Singed which was a poison based throw in poison run in poison behind you and it just looked cool that's that was one of my first thoughts so i like the idea of it but 
I'm nervous about how it's going to interact with the new flask changes. Sure. Uh, but it look, I, it's awesome. What a great idea. There's yeah. nothing like it. We, I've never seen anything like it. This is kind of getting ahead because we are, flask is a whole section for us. Um, but think about how valuable, and I don't know if they're getting tweaked or not, but how valuable the nodes or even the pantheons of getting flask charges for free, right? Yeah, like but it's three life. Fl- Pardon me? It's only life that you get. Oh, Every three it? seconds. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And a lot of these ones don't. Okay, but anyway, explosive concoction looks really, really cool. It looked and awesome, but again, I was like, "Is this really high? Like, are you are you multiply connected to what supports?" It? Sure. I, it just that was my first thought. Was like, okay, that's really strong because it was clearing like crazy. That is definitely one that you want. Like, obviously, we want to read the description of all of these, but that's one where it's like you it's almost impossible to have an opinion until you read how it scales, where its damage comes from, how the utility flasks interact with it specifically, what the damage difference is when you have flask charges versus when you don't. I love that they thought of that already, though. Like, what does your skill do when you have no flask charges? You still do damage. I, I love that. So anyway, it was a very cool one. I love the prospect of just like a little hobbit throwing their stones, right? Their little flasks. I think it's really cool. What did you think of the Summon Reaper minion? Okay, well, first off, I was like, that is badass. It looks so cool. Yes. And then when I found out that you can only have one minion essentially with it, I was laughing my ass <laughs> off. It made me laugh so hard. How thematically it does correct. Look cool. Yeah. What Grim Reaper wants that wants company. I uh, thank God they ended it too, letting you know, hey, just FYI, it's gonna eat your guardian. So yeah. the the one that we don't tell you dies and stays dead i can't i still can't believe that's not on the gem but isn't it neat though like yes it looks awesome and i'm gonna want to play with it just because but it actually does encourage you to have other minions though because that's how you keep it alive that's how you heal it it'll kill your other minions it so it's it's like the opposite of the um what's the new carry on golem it buffs minions based on the type of minion that they are this one reduces the value of your minions i forget if it was health or damage or whatever maybe all of it but it lowers their damage still i mean and then eats them right and then when it gets on lower life it eats them or it needs healing so i it's, cool. I can't, it's like a cast on damage low level golem or something i can't wait to see it i can't wait to see what it the numbers awesome. are and how it works but to have the concept of a one minion build that isn't based and on actually virulence, trying to make it that that is feasible it's right. not like this is a support like they want to make yeah. it so you could play a reaper build yeah so oh, and it seems like a permanent i haven't seen the stats of course but it seems like it's permanent like it's just based on health it's not a duration minion so now this one of course i think you spooged a little bit battle mages cry no oh this is the war cry one uh you know what ty i'm I, it killed me like playing the playing the war cry and exerting thing i it, i'm not gonna lie it looks awesome and was this the one with the fire too yeah so it basically it it makes it so that your next attack casts. now i don't know what's linked to what but basically your attack casts a spell triggers a spell and your spell damage is basically equal to your attack damage or no your attack damage is equal to your spell damage right so you basically it, your next five melee attacks are exerted Your exerted attacks will trigger a supported spell with the first melee hit, and then supported spells are triggered by attacks exerted by Battle Mage's Cry, which is that your spell damage on your main hand weapon affects it. It's 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 really cool. I just I got kind of sick of the word exerted this league and trying to like time everything like three one two one three two. It was not for me for Path of Exile. Uh, It looks cool though. It looked awesome actually because they tied it in with uh what the hell's the spell they were using firestorm yeah so it looked awesome yeah it does I look actually awesome. haven't seen firestorm since it was changed so that's why i thought it was new because that's not what firestorm used to look like the enemies <laughs> haven't been updated to the new firestorm the enemies enemies and bosses still use the old firestorm i wish it was still the old firestorm though because it's a lot less visually aggressive to me i can't use the new firestorm it's way too in my face all of a sudden it's like oh, oh my god oh there's another one it's it's really in my face uh what do you think of Ma- mana bond that one stood out to me big time. Uh, that that was, was the blue one, right? It was huge. It was like yeah. a big freaking square cross that took up the but whole screen. But only as long as you have lots of mana. Okay. You want to know my favorite part about mana, mana bond is not, I don't think I'll use it. I think the idea behind it's cool, but I love that when he's explaining it to Ziggy, it's all right, your area of effect 
is going to be based on the percentage of total mana. But the damage of mana bond is going to be based on the numeric value missing from the mana. I love that. That was yeah, like, that's right. uh, <laughs> it makes sense in my head, yeah, but yeah. I would just love the fact that it's like percentage for up, numeric for down. You got to make sure you keep that in mind. Yeah. So it look but, cool. Yeah. But uh, again, it's another way to have one skill do both jobs. Like, I can't tell you how many times I laugh. Every league, there's an onslaught of people looking for, I'm looking for a build that clears, that does boss damage, that does epic survivability, can tank, you know, like looking for the all-in-one build. But these skills are kind of like letting you not need to choose between clearing or bossing. I, I like the the, uh, the attempt at it. Sure, they're still going to be better at one over the other, but you're not hating one you're not hating clearing because you're good at boss damage or you're not hating bosses because you're good at clearing. I like their skills. You'd have that... to combine it with something though for when you're bossing. Oh, you could probably spam it more. It costs a yeah, lot of mana. Yeah, but it's 5% mana. It's 5% mana cost. Hmm. So I'm curious what you, you'd have to use something to like do some big, big mana use and then start using your mana bond. Yeah, maybe. maybe. While you're regening. Yeah. Maybe it's like turning on and off an aura or something that consumes mana i don't know i'm i'm all of a sudden like with a lot of these skills i'm seeing arrogance with vitality and clarity as like a, a mandatory thing for all my life builds use up a thousand life to get that life and mana regen and you're set for so many different things now okay there are two that you don't even have listed on your list i can't wait to get to go ahead absolution justin cool really cool. it's dominating blow for a spellcaster that's Very cool. what i've been dreaming of i haven't been able to use dominating blow because of its striking i can't click like that i can't aim like that yep, i can't totally. rush in and get my click right the first time this is amazing i can't wait to see how it's different from dominating blow but how sustainable it is i want to see the types of damage that these minions do how many I don't know if they're going to be sentinels. I think they reference them as sentinels, but how many sentinels Sentinel you get of absolution, how you get them against rare or unique enemies. And oh man, what? Oh, oh when I you have wait. the maximum number of dominating blow minions, does it just re summon? It replaces them with the new one. See, this won't. How do you know? This heals them because they've already got the skills. Did they so post the skills enemy? before our podcast and I didn't yeah, see them? Absolution. Are you ready? Shut your face. Are you ready? No, I'm not ready. I'm bringing it up. Damages enemies in an area, applying a debuff for a short duration. If a non-unique enemy dies while affected by the debuff, the enemy's corpse will be consumed to summon a Sentinel of Absolution for a longer secondary duration or to refresh the duration and life of an existing one instead if you have the maximum number. Where are you getting this? Isn't that awesome? Where is it? Oh, I just, they just sent me a message. They private messaged me. (laughs) They were like, hey, I heard, I heard you were recording. I'm sending it to you. This, don't share that. That's a private message they sent me. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> How do you not know this stuff, Ty? Oh, it was just on their main page. They don't have all of them listed, though. Only some of them. Yes, they do. No, there's 19, bud. There's 19. But they haven't done their skill reveals. Scroll down. You can mouse over every single one of them. I'm trying. It might not show you the level 20 version, but you can see what they are. Oh, wow. Oh, they're all listed in, uh, in difference. Okay, hang on. Which one is it? Anyway, that's pretty sweet absolution oh my goodness justin how did i oh i gotta change okay we gotta restart because i got some stuff to say okay so how many do you get you get well you can't see the level maximum three summon sentinels of absolution at level one so who knows what that changes to by level 20 this spell and minions convert 50 percent of physical to lightning Mm -hmm. ah see 50 percent physical is tough they just got rid of when they did their whole melee and slam sweep they got rid of 50 percent conversion on all these skills and turned them to 100 and now people are using stuff like ice crash but stuff like srs i mean at least it's 50 percent though yeah but how do you yeah you still have to scale physical damage you can't focus on lightning unless you can convert it to another 50 yeah i don't know well you would want to definitely scale physical damage anyway because the the minion the, the spell itself does physical damage well right but if it was 100 then it wouldn't matter yeah but now you're focusing again 100% on 50. And then what are you using? Then you're either using hatred or wrath. You can't use... Anyway, pretty cool that it refreshes (laughs) the life. It does. It is pretty cool. Instead of summoning Well, that's basically like uh, Herald of Purity, right? Same thing. Resummon or refreshes the duration. Right, but I was just saying, it's not like Dominating Blow where all of a sudden you got a minion back where you are. Yeah. 
Interesting. Oh, I'm going to take a look at these. Let's finish this up. I got I got stuff to read now. Let's go. Oh, go ahead. What's spectral, your next one? Well, Spectral Helix was the last one. Mm -hmm. I The only reason this stands out to me, it, like, I think it looks really neat. I'm probably never going to use it, but there's that guy that's the b mini boss that's guarding Deshret's spirit in Act 4 in the mines. And I keep seeing all these enemy skills. I'm like, where's that skill? Where is it? We finally have it. The guy's spinning axe skill. Cool. Yeah, now, now we got it. Scion style. You love the Scion. It is cool. Now, what were the two you want to talk My about? Favorite. Oh, there's actually more. So first off, the, the new Earthbreaker support is going to be so much fun. To be able to put slam skills on totems and have the yeah. totem do the slams. That is actually really fun. That, that to me, I could see maybe playing around with. But there are two that I'm really surprised you didn't bring up. So the first one is Eye of Winter, because this is probably like my most exciting skill ever, because this is Diablo all over it. Okay. So you're firing a projectile, and it constantly shoots shards out. Okay. And if you're looking for it, it's under the power and darkness in the middle. Okay. Spectral, or sorry, spell, projectile, and cold. I, I just love it. I, it reminds me of Diablo. I'm super excited to try and find something that works with that. But then okay. also... Forbidden Right is that purple one we saw in the teaser that I think is purplish, purple pinkish, but it's like you're, you're losing life by casting it. Right. Yes. Remember that one? Yep. Yep. And they I even think that's showed fun. you dying. Yeah, totally. Uh -huh. Well, well yeah, there was, there was a cut, there's so one or two other RF. dark pact or something similar to that, right? Yeah. But like RF, you go down to one. This one's not even like <laughs> you go to one, you just die. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one's going to be fun too. Totally. Yeah, Those but, two are the two. Uh, but this one, what? it goes to 11. Anyway, I am really excited about most of them. There were very few that I... Agreed. Like have, And even if I knew they were not ones that are going to be for me, they're still cool to see. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what other people do with them. I, yeah, I thought that they were all very creative. I thought it was really neat to hear Chris say, like, we've wanted to do this for a while, but it just didn't fit. We didn't have a way. Like, I like hearing about what they've had in the pipeline for a long time, but have been waiting for a good opportunity. Not just a... <laughs> throw it in and uh, even though like you even weren't a big fan of bone shatter but i th i really think that they're it's all for really well designed i think that they're gonna do a good job but you want to move on to yeah, game balance changes so yeah we got it we're like we're well i don't know how far exactly we are in because i didn't start right away but we're in a bit besides that four hours that four hour break i've different. i've been on for an hour 18 now Oh my god. Okay. All right. So what are we talking about now? We're talking about balance, game balance changes. changes. Just just in general. Like this is a general conversation. We kind of talked a little but... bit about it, but this is the whole idea of them trying to make it so power creep's not as big yeah. of a thing. Do you see the scale he showed? Yeah. Where you go all the way through like most of them and all of a sudden there's just a massive jump. And you can see the increase in power creep mm -hmm. as you hit like like harvest, obviously. Massive, massive jump in power creep. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to talk about. I am 100% fine with this. Well, yeah. I, when I, when he can explain it as, look, people are getting too out of hand. It's becoming way too easy for, and I'm, I, you, we, Tyler and I mentioned this. We're not in the top 5% as someone pointed out. We're not, we're casual players. We love to play the game. We play it lots, but we're not playing it to the, you know, top level of super, super fast, best builds ever. We just play it for fun. This doesn't concern me. Part of the game balance also, I don't know if you this was a separate topic for you, but was the changes to the um core game and to the Yeah, that's that's uh, next. to the axe. Yeah. Thanks for skipping ahead. You're I'm fine great. with well, it's all one it's yeah, all one it's, thing it's, to it's, me. It's, I'm fine with that. I they're gonna make the I when he showed the the dude dying in uh to the Roa charge, I was like, Thank you. I remember that. Yes, I was gonna was ask terrifying. you if you remember you had the old to days. move. Yeah. A hundred percent. If you had two Roas coming in, it was like, well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I, I, and that was fun. It was hard, but it was fun. And you just had to, you don't have to even think right now to go through the axe well, until yeah. you get, well, you don't, you really don't. I, I remember when he, when they added, so, you know, when you're breaking the eggs in act one and you break the eggs and you enrage the Roa. I remember when he says, yeah, they're going to be worth more XP, but there's a consequence. Of course, they're a lot harder and faster. And they're easy. I know they weren't. Right. Like even when you go into the boss version of that map, I forget what it's called. There's a couple versions of it where you break three egg nests on the way and then you enrage the boss mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. kind of stuff is like it's it's not hard, but you can tell that at some point it used to be and they were trying to bring it back. Now, that was like well over 10, 
billion leagues ago but well he talked about even that one part with the flicker strike pirates <laughs> i remember that man yeah. if you got a couple of them you were in trouble you had yeah. to be careful so i i'm i heard people you know talking about that this is going to screw over the casual player the person who plays less but i don't think that's true i think what it's going to do is make it so that you're still going to get to maps it's just going to be more of a challenge for you which is fine that's the game it's not supposed to be just right click your way through the game well you're yeah, supposed that's... to have to think about it figure it out plan your build plan how you go through it yeah and that's not bad e ease of difficulty doesn't kill a casual player if you don't want a difficult game you don't play a difficult game but if you like difficult games a difficult game doesn't push away a casual gamer like for example i like dark souls it, you don't make dark souls easy for someone who likes a difficult game you just make it consistent you make it rewarding yep. you have that good balance so sure we might be used to easy but that doesn't change like if ggg wants to cater to gamers and if their focus point is people that like a challenging and game with an overwhelming passive tree and infinite theory crafting like you don't make it easy you don't keep it easy you have to keep to your core and then you're just going to accept or reject players that don't like your game for what it is you know what I mean? Yep. The only argument I will make against it is just something we've I've talked about before is that I still want something that once I get to act, finish act 10 with a character, something to get up there again without having to do the acts. I don't mind doing them once every league. Sure, sure. But for me, it's, I, it's a struggle to play long term when I have to do that again. But with regards to game balances, I think it's fun. I can't wait to read the nerfs that people will, I'm sure, you know freak out about because it's their favorite skill but you know what how many skills are there in this game do you know uh well since they added heist it's over 900 <laughs> okay but it, so it's like what 300 though or something oh, if no, you don't wait, count all the yeah, it's got to be more than that i don't know i think it was if 364 you don't before heist, heist. okay that so whatever familiar. i'm gonna say 300 plus if they nerf two of your favorite skills you got a good chance of finding something else i my biggest hope is that everything that's been popular for the last three four five years gets just slammed to the ground and people get to find new stuff. Yep. Find new ways to play. I think that's super fun. I'm good for it. What do you got? Trying to find the, oh, they changed the wiki page. I don't actually care. I just, it's 300 plus. You have a one in what? You have a huge chance. There's like 290 plus you can still find. Oh my goodness. They changed the wiki page dramatically. Oh my goodness. All right. Who cares? Uh, anyway, what do you think about the game balance changes? The ones they talked about, at least. I thought, well, I thought it was a very mature talk. Or are we moving? Okay, hang on, hang on. I thought it was a really mature talk. And I thought that whether you agree or disagree with the changes and the direction that they're going, it's hard to argue, right? GGG knows where they want to go. But like we said, they're taking a huge step and making big changes. But it's because they need to change. Like, these are things that they want PoE 2 to be like. And you don't throw it all together, like Chris said. You can, if you can do some of the nerfs and the balance changes and the mechanic changes ahead of time, then you get people, not just your testers, but the community to test it out. Then you can make the tweaks and then the game's ready for Path of Exile 2. Imagine doing all of this for your first launch and then realizing you need to make a hundred tweaks per mechanic. So I think they're doing a really good job and I think he explained it really well. And I think the only thing you can complain about is if you didn't agree in the direction that they were going. But I, I think they're doing awesome. The only thing is, right now they've only made some core mechanic changes to Act 1. And he said over a year. He said it'll gonna, take roughly a year until they've touched every monster in the game. But totally fine. if these Act 1 monsters are in maps, you'll see the improved AI and difficulty. So that's awesome. kind of neat. I'm excited for that point, though, where League content and core content are the same difficulty that's yeah, one thing where we're huge mapping difference. and we we make our characters for mapping we make our characters for the overall experience and then there's always a point in a league where like ah you know what i'm just skipping league i'm skipping league till i get my items until i'm mapping because it's oh just you mean as you're leveling yeah 100 yeah. so i'm yep. looking forward to the point where my natural expectation is equal no matter the content that i'm playing mm -hmm. so oh hang yeah, on i agree so you remember the game being crazy hard, and that's really exciting because I really hope they get back to that. Uh, they said that they learned from the PoE demo that you played at ExileCon that and I, this one I didn't like because I misheard it and I was excited, but then when I re-listened to it, it was the opposite of what I wanted. But they said that mm -hmm. it's okay for monsters to run 20 or 40% faster than you. 
I thought of you as I'm soon like, as he said no, that. No, no, that's not okay. <laughs> What do you mean that's okay? What am I supposed to do? One of the worst parts about Dragon Age, and Dragon Age was a great game, but it was your ability to evade and avoid. It was like a kiting game. And to me, it doesn't make sense. You can't be faster than some some enemies. That just doesn't make sense. When you're leveling in Act One, yeah, nope, yeah, fight them, turn and fight, okay, or die. (laughs) All right, well, maybe we'll see what it's like. Like it's an overall experience, but that was a stat. Not like like all of them. It's like, yeah, there might be one or two enemies uh, that's that what are I faster hope. than you. Let's let, yeah, it, so it let's not awesome make all. It would be awesome if it was 100%. Have you opened, <laughs> Justin, a harvest lately? Because it's yeah. just like, ah! awful. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully it's not that type of quantity. And so, uh, but I'm excited for the entire year when GGG totally. has finally touched everyone. But that type of process does run the danger of more power creep in the meantime. So hopefully that's something that they can, like, it's still a year away, right? And they are making big changes until the year is done, not a few. So hopefully the power creep that's added or not is something that they're taking into account as they go through, because it would suck for them to then have to start back at act one and go all the way through over and over again, unless that just becomes a ritual that they do. But it'll be nice. It'll be nice once it's all done. Uh, Ziggy, though, he asked about enemy clutter as a part of all of this rebalancing. And Chris said that the eventual idea is kind of like what we're in the lines of. You want to know what's going on, but you still want to feel like you're defeating hordes. So he's like, he knows right now, and this was wonderful to hear him say, he knows right now it's almost a game of chance. A lot of the times you just can't see what's happening and you're just hoping for the best. You spam your flasks and you hope you stay alive. And he knows that's not optimal. He knows that's not that's not even what they're they were they've been aiming for, but that is the state of the game. So they're looking to get rid of that. Of course, it's a tricky balance to have a lot of enemies, but you still have a slow enough gameplay where you know what's happening. Uh, but he said that's the goal, and that's where they're going with it. So I, that was awesome to actually hear him say it and reference it. Yeah, I like that he talked about that the aggro range will be decreased, so you're not going to be pulling every single thing on the screen. It didn't even cross my mind that they're, that could be one of the major fixes that changes everything. There's still, I, it's tough because you still, I still want to have a lot of enemies to kill, but I want to be able to see what's going on. So mm. it is a really tough balance. Mm-hmm. And I forget where they said this, but Chris mentioned that there's going to be act boss drops. So it looks like maybe this will just be an act one, but there's going to be like bosses are just going to be that much bigger when it comes to loot. Now there'll be a, it'll be really rewarding. So I don't know. I mean, they said that last league and it was, (laughs) you could (laughs) kind of see it a little bit, but but. yeah, I think he said that they're going to make it so they won't drop magic items anymore though, which if that's true, would be awesome. Oh man. Nothing magic and below could drop. Make that game wide. I'm fine with rare only. And just give me a little bit more scours and great. Awesome. Let's have a good time. Uh, but it was nice to see some PoE 2 footage again, some of that stuff and seeing like how they were, what they were referencing at the time of the PoE 2 footage. I'm looking forward to it. That's where they're aiming Path of mm. Exile 1 to be before PoE 2 comes out. So, hey, why not? Yeah. All right. Flasks, just go. Yep. Speak. Uh, I like that they're reworking it. I like the reworking it. This isn't exactly the rework I was hoping for, but at least it's something. I like that, although... I guess this isn't core then because the the new flask changes are are tied into the drop the new drops from from the league so I'm assuming that some of this stuff isn't going core right now into standard but yeah it's uh, it's a toss up for me because I have I don't like the whole stupid hit all your buttons and spam your flasks but I also I don't know I, it's going to be really hard to to play it and find out because now you're getting less flask charges okay. from monsters and I'd like the idea of ailments and things like curse or or freeze protection that they're now just instant and that's it it's not there's no more immunity to it for you know however long that flask lasts for that really really for me personally changes a ton for flasks because a curse map now becomes not feasible because i can't just run a warding flask and run it through the whole map and i'm fine which i get it you're you know, but just make, you is just need of, to re-roll the map now and hope you don't valid. Yeah, re-roll the map or I don't know what I would do. I'd have to figure it out. I guess it would now depend a little bit more on the curse. So the actual flask change to me is 
I am on the fence and won't know till I play, but I do really like what they did. Well, again, we'll have to see how this goes, but the new crafting that you've had, these new orbs that they've added to the flask. So there's two, one is instilling and one is enkindling. Uh, one will make it so that the utility, so it says the utility flask will improve it, but you can't gain charges during the effect. So it'll just make it better. So your topaz now does more, but you can't get charges back while it's running. Honestly, that's probably my probably the one I will never ever touch. Because the idea of it not getting charges while I'm while it's up is not great to me. Especially if you talk about something that is like a a warding or staunching or something where it's or, or you know the freeze one. I've become immune and I am immune for a few seconds. Well, this isn't that anymore. I've used it. I'm not whatever I was, but then it's done. And then yeah, sure the the implicit or the the initial bonus of that flask might last for longer but i'm not getting any charges so i don't see that one being a big one for me instilling is very interesting this was you all over it where based on a condition it automatically yeah uses it and he said one of the conditions might even be like use the flask beside it right yeah when you, you use, can an, use adjacent an adjacent flask. flask amazing you could hit basically you could hit button five and it uses all of your flasks if you have that implicit on it. These are only for utility flasks. Unfortunately, hmm. not for life flasks yet. I would love for the life flask one to ha be able to have that implicit. So these in kindling and instilling, they're going to be implicits, which is awesome because now you can still use your alterations to get the mods you want on them. But so I'm, I'm still really hoping the enkindling well, they're not and really instilling. Implicit. They're the enchantments or whatever. Sorry, yes, them. enchantments, enchantments. Yep. I used the wrong word. But it, w what I'm saying is like when you recraft it, unless you scour it, you're not going to lose the enchantment and implicit, whichever. So I just hope they're common enough. Like maybe not alteration common, but hopefully chaos common at least because yeah, I... I agree. Otherwise, there's no point to it. Right, like to me, flask. I still have a hard time without beast crafting getting my staunching flask. And if you're trying to save people's wrists, you can't make it too rare. Because the instilling, you don't have any control over that condition, right? It no. sounds like you're you rolling -roll. and just see what it gets. Right. Yeah. So you're re-rolling until you're getting the type of thing that you're getting. Whereas in kindling, kind of weird that that only affects one or of the two orbs. Whereas in kindling, it's like it's just on. You get sure, right, true, true. So. But, it's it, it it's really cool and chris said that there's a big pool of triggers that the instilling orb can provide your awesome. flasks so yep. i am really excited for that because i'm a four I, even when i posted my my picture of the val city and how long it took me to find the waypoint one of the people were like four life flasks really right because i just took a screenshot <laughs> of my game i like shut your face but <laughs> that's still, not what we're talking about but here. now i can do one life flask and then have four i can still be my one button player and do it especially if you can roll on what it is that you want out of that utility flask right like, if this is my staunching flask i would love to roll the condition that am i bleeding use it amazing you know what I, mean? I can't wait oh to have it on automatically for that i just think is amazing yep. so i to me i think what they did is brilliant i think it's a baby step because I think they're actually oh, trying so. to yep. get rid of the one, two, three, four, five spamming. But this method of including these orbs made it so that you can play the old way, the current way. Sure. Or you can try these other ways. So this is a way that actually includes everyone without making it an options menu. And Ziggy even said, hey, why don't you turn it into an options thing? And Chris is like, the orb thing makes more sense because now you can actually specifically choose. Right, You don't have to, with every character, go into the options menu and change stuff. Now, this is very specific to a flask, and that's what most people would want to do anyway. And that's true, even for someone like me. They took away, though, like one of the big focuses he talked about is that they want to make it so that flasks are not this big part of the power creep or a big part of your stuff. I, my concern is still, we've had this before, though, is boss fighting. Now, now, flasks, first off, regen less. It takes more monsters to kill to regen the flask. Uh, but when I'm, when you're fighting a boss, I don't know if it's just going to become a mental thing people have to think of, but flasks become a very big part of literally every single build. So I'm really curious now if the idea is that they're just less of that because you haven't actually made flasks more powerful unless you're using kindling. And if you're using in kindling, then you have to be fine with the fact that you're getting a bigger bump from it 
but you're going to regen them slower because it's not going to regen charges while you're not well while it's up so I, it'll be interesting to see i'm happy they're at least doing something with flasks i love it i think it's brilliant yeah yeah now there's somebody over there whoever it is that they're that's their english professional i hope they get paid a lot because there's some words out there i'm like that sounds really cool I think I get what they're saying, but there's no way that's a real word and it's a real word. Like there's so many descriptions or titles of gems or mods in this game where I'm like, I've, I've looked it up and they're real words and they don't seem like real words at all. So I, I, I <laughs> this is the new flask. Yeah. I think in kindling yeah. was one I'm like, well, I know it. Oh, corundum. <laughs> that's the one I thought you were leading towards. Yeah, the that's new right. Flask. There's a new flask, Corundum. Yeah, and then, I, mean, I knew about Exsanguinate, but you didn't know it ahead of time, like when they came out with the skill last yeah. league. And... <laughs> oh, I did. Uh -huh. I read fantasy stuff where it's like blood and guts and everything. I know a lot of words for blood, man. Come on, come on. Uh -huh. So, but anyway, I thought it was brilliant that they found a way to incorporate what people want, but have kept what people want. And I, I think it's a baby step. I think they're getting rid of the old way and they're moving towards the new way, but this is a great way to get some good feedback. I also actually like it. I don't, but I do. It makes perfect sense. So even though it actually goes away of how I currently use flasks, I'm kind of glad, uh, hesitantly, but I am, that you can't be immune to an ailment if it hasn't already been applied to you. Yeah, but you also can't be immune to it now after it's been applied to you. And that's where I have a problem with it. It used to be that if you, if I had an ailment and I used the flask, I'm at least now immune for a few seconds for the, for the duration of the, the flask. And now it's, it removes it like that. But if it's applied right after, you're still affected by the ailment. That's where, that's where it bothers me. I understand what you're saying, where you used to be able to apply the flask. Right. Yeah. Apply you would, the flask. You would, so you would already be immune say to it. I get burning. It. Right. Yeah. I get that, but I just, I, I'm curious to see how it plays out where it says, okay, I'm, I'm burning. I mean, it's going to probably be more for some other things besides burning, but I'm burning. I hit the flask. I'm now not burning, but I can become burning right after that. Mm, right, right. That's where I'm, that's where I'm not sure how. It I don't out, think so. that's the way it is though. Now I think if, if you were burning and you use the flask, you get rid of it. And then there's that immunity stage for a bit. You know what? I changed my mind because I just thought of the Witcher. He takes potions ahead of time that makes him resistant to stuff. That's what this is. I'm going to give you just an example of the, um, they have an example of dousing, which is the burning one. Okay. So it now says it will grant immunity to ignite for one second if used while ignited and removes burning. So you're, you basically, basically the goal of their flasks now is to, if you have it, remove it, but not for the duration of the it's for one flask second, anymore. No not four seconds or and you seconds. have to have it yes if you use yes. it without having it yeah. you could just get it right away i'm on the fence 50 50 i'm fine with both we'll ways see how it goes but i guess now though that you can have that actually put on a trigger when burning get rid of i mm -hmm. guess you know it's not really It'll be interesting that big to see how deal. it plays I, yep. to me it makes sense when you know what's happening in the game but if the game doesn't slow down and you do this What's it going to do for me? I'm still going to have a lot more surprise damage hitting me, right? I have less to prepare me for all the surprise crap that's currently happening. The game hasn't slowed down yet. Act one has. That's it. I care about mapping. Right. So maybe it was a little early to get rid of that type of revamp, but we'll have to see. I haven't seen, we haven't seen all the, all the new flasks haven't been listed yet. Um, so I don't really know all the flask rules, like how you gain charges. I thought it was just on kill. I thought there was based on, but I don't know, like apparently Cyrus only gives you flask charges during his phase changes. Phases. I thought it was based on how much damage you deal or a certain amount of hits. And no, that's never been a thing and it should be. It's so stupid, stupid with it flasks. Is. I mean, what's yeah. Dumb. Anyway. Um, Overall, I think the new flask setup is a lot more strategic and a lot less chance based. And I remember, I mean, you and I have talked about flask for forever. We had a big conversation about flask with Yoji. I forget if it was on the normal episode or after dark, but it was, it's nice to see because uh, they are a lot more strategic now, even if you go the automatic route. So I'm overall quite, quite happy with it. I'm very excited to try it out. Man, these, what is it? The instilling orb? Is that the one that's for me? I really hope they're common. Because I really want to see what I, they it's They need like. to be more like an Elk than even a Chaos, I think. I think yes. they need to be, especially those ones where you got to roll it yeah, to get it. You don't want to be scared to spam it, especially as a new feature. Well, though. maybe not spam, but at least use it a little bit. 
you know, and, and plan it out. If they're like chaos or higher rarity, that's going to be, that's going to be a, a little tough. I, you know, what's also cool though. I like that they changed the look of them. So when yeah. you use it on it, the look of it's different. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. The tube and all that, the platform, they're really hitting hard. And I think it's great because it adds more versatility to builds, but support gems, damage support gems got a nice spanking. Yeah, I think that's fine. I like the fact that at least they told us afterwards that they were bumping up the 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 actual skill itself was going to in most cases be buffed up while support gems were being Brought nerfed down. down. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I think I I I'm really curious to see the numbers, but I don't mind the idea of them making it so that utility supports now are something to consider along with damage. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's fine. Yeah, um, I, I do. It, without seeing numbers, who knows? Sure. I, you know, like we'll know that this week, but I am not worried about it. No. They'll figure it out. We'll be fine. The concept of having more of a utility support as equal to a damage support, like the, when you weigh the pros or and cons of pure damage. Yeah, just to at least see a 50-50 value in, but do I totally. use Culling Strike or gmp or this pure damage one to have that as an equal option makes perfect sense and if it does to me they mean, did that with things sorry I, no, I was just gonna say if that means you lower the damage output of the pure damage ones like however you bring it around to have those as equal options makes perfect sense to me and i'm curious to see and we talked a little bit about this a couple episodes back specifically with life tap but things like uh, fortify life tap you got a utility out of them, but they added damage to them. Now, obviously, life tap, it wasn't like they added it to it because it just came out like that. But Fortify, they changed it around. So you were still getting damage while you were still gaining the utility. So I'm curious if they pull those numbers down so that they maybe are not giving as much of a damage bonus because you're getting the utility. But I like that. I like when they go, you have an option of damage, but you could cut that damage down a little bit and gain a utility. Uh, that to me is almost always more beneficial. But, uh, Again, once we see the numbers, I'm not worried about it. I, I know people are going to cry nerf, and that's awesome. Let me play the game differently. Make me find something else, some new way to try it. I'm totally up for right. it. They're not revolving the game around how we play today. They're revolving the game around the state that they want the game to be in. And they know if it doesn't work, they can change it. Yeah, like, they're good at changing it. They're good. They'll do it. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about this one because I texted you about <sighs> this. The triggering spells now cost mana. I would like to... So, interrupt you and uh, for anyone that likes to follow wrecker of days guides does this wreck you i don't feel like it does this, well first off you don't know how much mana cost it's going to be because they didn't say if it was full full mana cost i don't think they, they have not released so the big one for me like i see them really so okay here's what we're talking about trigger skills no longer the, free. the spells that your trigger skills use are no longer costing zero mana. They cost Correct. the full amount of mana. Did they actually say the full amount? Well, they said it's going to cost I don't mana. If they said full. And it might sure. even be even more than the cost, depending on the skill. Now, here's where I see the big problem in terms of GGG's meta. Something like cast on crit. That's a trigger skill that costs, you're doing all this damage for the cost of, let's say the cost of channeling Cyclone, which has so no nothing. supports linked to it. Right, so you're... What do you need? 30 mana regen Even a second? Even with supports, with two rings, you're paying nothing. It's literally right. free. So to require the cost of Frostbolt and Ice Nova, which are common cast on crit stuff, okay, that makes sense. Uh, for something that's cast while damage taken, like a low level one where you have Flesh Offering and Desecrate or Withering Steps, a popular one. I wish more people used cast and damage taken level one and Lightning Warp, but that's fine. <laughs> But like, so that's the kind of stuff that, that makes me nervous because what I've done in the past now, now it's, it's, a, it's, I, I totally see the change. It just, every build I've planned around what I've always tried to maximize the amount of mana reservation I've had with auras because I try and play one button and cast when damage taken setups, save my butt for one button skills. So now, basically, I have to actually care about mana regen far beyond the skill that I'm playing. Because, Maybe. well, a full-fledged cast on damage taken level 20, sure, it's not going off How often. many level 20 cast on damage takes to you? On my Righteous Fire one, I have a full four link for it because I have Stone Golem, Molten Shell, and something else. And how, what percentage of mana are you, are you reserving? None. 
Like, I think I have like 30 mana left over in total before oh, so, I have any so you're, items you're on. you're nearly 100%. Yeah, because I have Purity of Fire on, um, Vitality's on my life. What else? There's there's a there's a couple of them anyway. I have right. like so I you even have to adjust your armor, build. so I technically only have five percent left over. Mm -hmm. So you may have to adjust, but we also because we don't know what the cost is, and is it based on the level? Is it based on the level of the the active spell, or is it based on the level of the cast when damage taken, or whatever? Like the trigger. Sure. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. But I just like the fact. Well, they're also bringing in more spells that you can now link into it. Which well, yeah, now that they leads actually to more cost options. you. Now you have a lot more options for, okay, sure. well, this actually cost me. So they referenced Arcane Surge. Well, great. Now, actually, I might even use Arcane Surge in some of my skills because, you know, like for a channeling skill, you're not using Arcane Surge. I use Incinerate with my Righteous Fire build. Well, a channeling skill is never going to use that much mana. But if I'm tanky, like I am with my Chieftain, and... I'm having my cast and damage taken level 20 going off often, along with my cast and damage taken level 1 setup going off often. Maybe I am actually hitting that mana threshold for Arcane Surge, and I can throw it onto Incinerate. So it does have its It's going to be really interesting to see what the actual cost is to see how you have to adjust your builds, because I would be shocked if the skill costs were so high that all this means is you're going to have to plan around mana regen. You're going to need to at least not ignore it. You're going to have to, it's going to have to be something that you consider. Yeah. And so it's with this in mind where I see every single one of my builds having arrogance, vitality, and clarity linked together. Yeah. Clarity will become a big thing for sure. Huge. And it actually uses less life than even precision. Right. So yep. it's, I, it's cool. It terrifies me. It terrifies me, but I actually think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, so I'm nervous. So people that follow my guides, I have I have so much to consider and rebalance and redo. I don't know what I'm, this might be the league I take off and not do any guides and uh, just work on my filter because it's 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 you're nuts. a liar. I don't know. Right. I don't Battle know Royale. how I'm going to do this. Battle Royale. Did I what do you think one? of it? I passed Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, I did. Wow. I think I passed three things. Well, that's that's it's probably what we're going to mostly do right here anyway. Battle Royale, it came out with right following yeah. the announcement. I love that they're adding something where they're like, I, so first off, I love the idea that the first one was a joke and you knew it. It came out for like a day on April Fool's Day April a few Fools. years ago. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. But I love that even internally, even though it was released as a joke, it was treated as a joke. Like they got a team together and like, you're not allowed to put more than one day, day <laughs> on this. Whatever you do, you got one day to do it and that's it. You can't come back to it. And, and so now that that was actually quite popular and they're bringing that back as a full fledged thing, like they're making a brand new skill tree for it. Like they're, they're making brand new levels. It's they're pretty making cool. new skills. They've revamped uniques. Like it, it's a lot of work and a lot of thought. And I love the honesty of it right off the bat. They're saying, we don't know if this is going to stay, but we'd like to try it out for a while. Give us your honest feedback. Maybe it'll become permanent. Maybe it'll disappear in a few weeks. But I love they did. So remember, I've talked about Bethesda's release of Fallout 4, Fallout 76, whatever it was, how impressed I was with it, right? They announced it at E3. Four months later, it was coming out. And people are used to like, oh, two years away. Four months later, the crowd erupted. And, and the cherry on top was, by the way, we have this secret mobile game we're putting out. And everybody's freaking out. Oh, wow, it's going to be great. When's that going to be coming out? Is that going to be in two years at least? Because we get this sweet game in four. It's today. And the people freak out. I love that even though it's not the same scale, that Royale was quiet. Nobody knew about it. Yeah, you can play it today. When I'm finished talking with Ziggy, you can sign in. I thought that was really awesome that it was ready to go. So I, I think the amount of effort they put into I'm probably going to try it, but I'm never, it's not my style of play. I don't care. So, but I think I, I see it being really successful. Yeah. I played it. I, it's not my thing just because it like, you have to be so on the ball about swapping out your skills and paying attention to the drops. And you know, like I've been mean, for most skills, you gotta be very click dependent on where you're aiming to actually hit people. It's really fun. The idea behind it's fun. It's really, really easy to play, which is nice. You literally just create the character and boom, you're in. You wait for a hundred people. Had some weird bugs yesterday where like I, I, one of my games, I couldn't do damage to anything and I couldn't take damage from Oh, so anything. you actually played yesterday. Invincible. Oh, I thought you meant you played I played the, the day, day it came out. Okay. I, I played the day it came out. 
I, I was invincible and, and I was like, what the, f and I'm running around trying to figure stuff out. I couldn't level cause you have to kill mobs and players to level. So I'm just stuck there as a level zero, level one, whatever, witch. and then we ended up in the middle and there was another person who was also invincible. And then this one dude who had actually like won his way to the middle. So me and the other guy just stepped out and let the, if you go outside of the circle, you'll take damage. So we just walked out to let him win because we hadn't, we literally hadn't done anything. We, I couldn't figure out how to actually play mm, it's too bad. in the game. So hopefully that's something they figure out. But it's a really, really cool idea. I love the hideout decoration thing until I found yes. out that it's based on how many wins you get, not on how much you play. And that to me is stupid. No, I think you have to finish first. Oh, okay. That's dumb. To get I thought the maybe basic kills. version. I thought kills would basic be version. Yeah. Then you have to get seven wins first place to get the second version. That's ridiculous. Maybe. Ridiculous. Sure, I, I think I agree on the threshold complaint, but I think it's awesome that there is a hideout decoration and that it does change and get better based on whatever stat or threshold. I, I, maybe. I just think it's crazy how much it takes to get to it. Sure. But or maybe if it was you fun. have two, like you have a kills totem per se, and then you have like a wins totem, I think, you know. Yeah, but you know what? Here's my problem. So I love to play it. It, it like it, It's not something I'm going to be good at. But if myself or my kid wants to play it or you want to play it and you're just enjoying it and having fun, I, it'd be cool if there was something you could aim to, like top 10 finishes or top sure, five sure. or something, yeah. not seven wins just to get the second of like 12 versions of the sure, thing sure. like that. That's crazy. But it's only going to run for this weekend. So by the time this comes out, it's almost over. So you should check it out. Wow. It's fun at least to try it. Yeah. And then they had an interesting cons uh, talk. Not like it's, it's not a big one for us, but it is a really big conversation that could be had. We won't have it here, but the prospect of how MTXs impact PVP matches. They, I'm so glad they keep it off. A hundred percent should always stay off. It's already laggy. A hundred people playing on there. You know, when you're running across a character, because all of a sudden there's like a little bit of a, a stutter to the game. So yeah, no, I'm so happy that they kept that off and I don't think they should ever put it back on. But uh, MTX, supporter packs came out. Yeah, they did. And they, I think they look amazing. Three tiers though. They've yeah, never done they that had, before. Yeah, I think that's really smart because they're definitely going to, yeah. Definitely. I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, I know you will. Seer Demigod one. Yep. Which one was that? Was that the dark one or the blue one? The the blue one. Oh, the that freaking portal? thing that pulls up a portal? Oh yeah, my God. Yeah, that's like this huge epic warrior lady that's holding up like a triangle Valkyrie portal. crazy lady. Yeah. Oh. Ugh. That looked really cool. And I just love the concept that they have portals that look different based on the map device you're using, whether it's a small map device or the big map device. I love it. The third tier is, I don't know if this is going to be a permanent rule, but this this time around, the third tier gives you a map device apparition if you're using these portals. Yeah, there was some that, like, I have another one that gave me an apparition as well. I don't remember. But what they're it was saying, from, as far as I understood it, maybe I'm wrong, but the it's only the third tier where you get that apparition. I think it's only tier. the third tier of the Soul Keeper one, though. Oh, okay. The Soul Keeper one has the apparition, and it's an apparition that either will be on top of each portal if you use the large map device or on top of the map device if you use the small one. I really like both packs. Sometimes I'm not interested in, in both of them. This one, I really like both. I think if I was to choose, like, I love the portal of the blue one you mentioned, but a portal and a pet on the other one, it's pretty Plus, sweet. Plus, this is the first time where they actually gave you points equal to the value of the package oh, in the is third it? tier. So first oh, and second, right. you okay, don't. So under... But in the third tier, you get that extra 50, nice. 50 points, which is cool. An American yeah, it's like four billion. Dude, yeah, Canadian, you, but... you you go when I log in on console and I'm like, you know what? I got I got thirty five bucks. All right, let's go see what the. I'm like, oh no, that's like ten thousand dollars. Okay, no, not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But a couple other talks that didn't really fit into anything. A little tidbits from from me for Ziggy's talk before we sign off. Yep, makes sense to me that all these gameplay changes and mechanic changes are happening at the same time. Like Chris was saying, like we have all these ideas, but sometimes you can't throw them in because of whatever state or conflict with another mechanic. So they, all these changes are intentionally happening with each other. And so I'm excited to see what the overall progress is like. Sure, you might not get the full picture once you pass Act 1, but I'm excited to see what it's like and to see these new flask orbs and to, especially at the end of the year, have all those different monsters with the proper AI and new setup 
hopefully there isn't an inconsistency in maps when you have you know you have a mix of act one versus act two monsters in some of your maps but uh he did mention that uh, poe2 is still quite a few leagues away so your no uh, surprise no no I, that wouldn't surprise you at all he said that there it was a big mistake he reemphasized the big mistake of having a priority queue uh for paid streamers so he said that's never going to happen again so Oh yeah, Chris mentioned, I was really, really surprised by this, that the reason that build planning and guide planning in-game isn't in the game. So the reason that those features aren't in the game is because there's not enough feedback or demand for it. What? Yeah, I don't believe him. I also, so he was talking about the Chinese realm is because of the Chinese development team that I didn't realize they were actually entirely separate. And so they make decisions somewhat based on their own. But I like that Ziggy asked him, like, we had a planner built into- Yeah, you could right click gems and stuff. You could right click on your tree. You could right click the skills. Yeah. And and then you, but he didn't, I guess the idea for him was that they want to make it so that you could download that and you could attach it to your build guide and people could then download it in almost like a filter style and have it you know f- populate the tree great idea but i still don't understand why can't you just leave in the right click what was so i don't understand why they took rid of that and yeah there's a demand goodness me how do you like why is that something you wait for a demand how should you not be able to plan your entire character in game like sure it doesn't need to be like chris was saying though they are they do have stuff in the pipeline they are working on things including downloading a build guide and being able to apply it somehow in your game and show you. I didn't hear him say that that was a plan, just that he liked it. Like that that's what he wanted it to be like. He said that whatever they add, it won't be like path of building, but it'll definitely help you add, manage your content better. I just, there's certain things that your game should have. Like you need to be able to be handling yourself. You shouldn't have to wait for people, a certain number of people to complain about it. And his idea of how he wanted to do it to me is actually really cool. Like if you could go on and create one in your own game, that was like a template of what the skill tree is going to look like. And he even said having, you know, uh, an early, a middle and a late game version of it. And then you could attach that to your build guides and somebody who's following your build can just download it and like a filter, apply it to their game. And then when they open up the skill tree, they can actually see get layer. a feel yeah, yeah. for where they're going yeah i think that's so much i better. like it but even if you're not doing a guide you're just playing by yourself you plan ahead yeah, the right click is weird to take to get rid of that like there, there needs to be a little bit more than nothing and a company shouldn't need a nudge in that direction it's a theory crafting game get some theory crafting qol theory craft in your head yeah <laughs> apparently yeah 2021 uh do you have your pencil handy Uh, So anyway, and then trade was a big conversation that they had. And Chris was intentionally generic uh, and not specific when comparing the console. Like they kept calling it the Chinese realm, but it's basically what console is right here, where there's pros and cons to the console version of trade. and There's pros and cons to the PC trade, but Chris never gave a final answer. Uh, He was very quick to point out that trade can ruin the rng experience if you make it too easy but trade is a core focus of path of exile so you don't want to make it too difficult so he said there's still basically now from this point paraphrasing it's it's still quite you have to be very careful how you implement it because you if you ruin trade you ruin the game yep but they they already he's, he's been quoted as saying they screwed up when they made trade the way it is and he wished they didn't they wished that it was still more difficult to find the perfect item but still very tempting to want to trade on a regular basis he said they jumped the gun a little too quick so it is hard to go back so i'm curious how they'll fix that for poe2 if they even bother did you notice uh no bay class this time I did not. Do they normally do it after announcement or the manifest? Yeah, and it's stuff? normally like that. They'll have it as part of the table of contents, and then after Ziggy, then they'll load up Bay Class right away. But Wasn't there was that no only mention of it. Uh, they've done it two leagues in a row now, so this would be the first league since they started the Twitch thing where there wasn't. So, oh, hope, like no, no criticism to Bay Class. I think it's absolutely awesome. Um, I just hope that Tarky is doing well, and uh, I wish him the best of health, just in case. Don't know if anything's up or not. So I hope, I hope he's well and uh, that bay class is up and running again soon if they want it sweet any any final thoughts before we take off man wrap up time man all right i'm, I'm done G-G-G? we got this week i'm excited for manifesto and notes mostly notes 
I'm excited for the whole thing. I think they've done an awesome job. This is a very brave expansion. Not necessarily like the expedition, but a very brave meta change. And so I'm proud of the company for doing it. And I wish them the best of luck with the launch. I hope it's a very smooth launch. Yep, we're going to have a midweek episode for patch notes. Forever XL patch notes. Don't worry, you'll get your information from the top 5% players right here. <laughs> so you know what you need to know going into... Uh, 3.15. So that'll be later in this week. Thank you guys for joining us. Forever Exiled, episode 92, a Path of Exile podcast. I'm Justin, aka Tags. <laughs> I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. Thanks for listening, everyone. Patrons, we'll catch you guys in After Dark. Everybody else, we will see you in the Patch Notes episode. If you're looking for more information, you can find it down below. We've got a website, foreverexile.com. We're on Twitter, foreverexile82. We've got a Discord channel. Come in and say hi. And our Patreon and support information is down below or on our website. Peace. Bye.